What's going on guys, my name is Arrow and in today's video we are talking about my second build of the league, Strength Stacking Volcanic Fisher Totems. Let's get into it.
All right, let's dive right in. Uh, this is not a super off meta build, for at least for my standards. So I'm not gonna discuss all of it because it's pretty straightforward, but uh, let's talk about why I'm playing this build. So on my second Sanctum of the League, I dropped this. Adds two to three fire damage to attacks per 10 strength. And I thought, all right, I have to use this. This is awesome. What can I do with it? And then I thought, all right, let's play the new skill. Volcanic Fisher is a skill that fires out a large AOE uh, Fisher that does area damage. And then at the end of the Fisher, it fires a bunch of projectiles into the air, which do a fair bit of damage, and they all kind of can overlap on the same target. So the idea is we have multiple totems that are all firing Fishers, let's say a boss, a bunch of projectiles go up in the air and they all land on the boss and they shotgun. Very standard uh, strength stacking setup here. So we're using Iron Will, which makes strength damage bonus apply to spells. We're using the Iron Fortress to make that uh, bonus 3% instead of 2% for 10 strength. And then we use the Crown of Eyes to make the increases in reduction to spell damage that we get from Iron Will to apply to attacks at 150% of their value. So we have really, really big increased damage from this setup. Interestingly, you can also use Iron Grip, which makes this damage uh, bonus apply to projectiles, which is what we have at the end of our attack. Fishers fire the projectiles up in the air, Iron Grip applies to that. So we have all this increased damage per strength, uh, and on top of that, we are using the Relic that we got for flat damage to strength and also Brutus's Lead Sprinkler. So basically, flat damage and percent damage are both solved with these items that I've already talked about. This is very standard. Um, I've done this type of build before. A lot of other people have done this build before. Not super breakthrough, so I'm not going to go super in depth, but I will talk about some of the other items that I'm using. Her shield, Shaper Shield, is fantastic. This one is not good, but it's plus one totems. I didn't want to invest too much into this build. I just wanted to get it going and kill all the in-game bosses, which I did. Um, but yeah, getting plus one totem on a Shaper Shield, very important. This is just a replacement for Astrament Astramentus that has some res on it and some life. I was going to recraft the prefixes and I just never got around to it. I didn't want to spend money on it. Um, but you can just use an Astramentus here. The hoop rings are super nice. These are both like, I think like 100 chaos each. Um, percent strength, all attributes, all res, damage, and rarity. Two of these. And it's just really nice, easy solutions that give you a ton of what you need. Chest we talked about. Boots, these are again, whatever. They have life regen, life, uh, movement speed, and strength. The implicits were just things that I threw on there, nothing too important. Uh, the magnate belt, super strong, just gives us a ton of res big strength, and then double and triple damage. Gloves, uh, again, strength, you need accuracy. Um, I would recommend getting it at least on the uh, gloves. I have a really good roll here. You're probably gonna need about 600. You might need a little bit more depending on your setup, uh, how much decks you end up with. But um, these are just basically some res, some strength, accuracy. And then the implicits, again, just whatever I could throw on there. This is far from optimized. You can get way more strength. You can get way more damage, but I wanted to get it to the point where it could kill the in-game bosses, and then I was happy with it. It was also really good for Sanctum. I did a couple of full runs with Sanctum, and I easily killed the in-game boss. Uh, some interesting gem interactions. Focus Ballista actually works with Volcanic Fisher totems because Volcanic Fisher is a projectile attack, technically, because it fires projectiles at the end. The bonuses that you get from Focus Ballista all apply to the skill. None of them are projectile specific. Totem placement speed, more attack speed, and more damage, all non-specific to projectiles, so they apply to both the projectiles and the fissure. So very, very strong interaction there. I ended up going with Life Tap. I got sick of managing mana, and this way you can just reserve all of your mana and just throw Life Tap on, on everything. I had a ton of extra gem slots, it was very easy for me to fit life tap on all the things that mattered. Uh, let's talk about the tree. So we go for the uh, strength stacking loop here off of Marauder and come all the way up here. And we have two split personalities with strength and life. 67 strength, 67 life on a jewel. Very, very nice. For our cluster, we got fuel to fight and weight advantage. Weight advantage is just some double damage and some strength. Um, and then we have a damage while leeching, which we're always leeching is our totems. Each damage to us through the Chieftain Ascendancy. Oh, we'll talk about the Ascendancy quick. Uh, two Kohamas War, Her War Herald, very strong. Gives our totems more, even more activation range and huge buff effect for our totems. 
but you run uh, Ancestral Protector and War Chief, and you put that on a multiple totem setup, drop those on the boss, and then you summon your, your regular totems and watch the boss get deleted. The Salio, a super nice quality of life. All that fire res makes it really easy to gear. Um, and then we take Ramako, just because it's on the way, it's actually not very strong, uh, but Hinakara Death's Fury is really strong. Covered in Ash, really good. Increased strength, and uh, we don't actually use that, that fire leech. So what I would do is, if I was going to push this even further, is I would take Hinakora as a Forbidden Flesh and Flame combo, and then I would take Volico Storm's Embrace, which gives you Endurance Charge Generation, and a bunch of more regen and more damage. This is really good. Then you can also take uh, Aro Hangui, uh, Moon's Presence, which is makes your totems deal uh, more damage, gives them more AoE, makes them immune to fire damage, and it makes you take less damage. So these are both very strong, but the only way to get Hinakora is to path to it. So if you take this with a Forbidden Flesh and Flame, you can get both of these as well and have five in your Chieftain. Um, what you'd really want to do is take Strength Stacking Jewel from, from Juggernaut. If you have tons of currency, but that is very expensive. So for our tree, besides the, the loop, we come down here for the totem stuff, all the Strength Stacking stuff, uh, Melee Crit, and then we get all the totem stuff up here. The very straightforward tree or our medium clusters these are really really strong uh, increased effective buffs of your ancestor totems ours are always up this is not like a regular melee build where your totems die all the time we have a lot of totem life so even in the in the pinnacle boss fights they never die so uh buff effect very strong and then we get onslaught from sleepless sleepless sentries um again ancestral guidance and ancestral echo for attack speed and placement speed we have a lethal pride that doesn't even give us any strength because I was having trouble buying one. People just weren't responding and I got annoyed. So I just bought a cheap one. It's got a little bit of double damage. It's got fire res, uh, some life, and then it gives strength to all these little nodes. So this was super cheap. I don't know, I spent like 20 C on it. Um, you can probably spend a divine and get one that gives you like three strength passives and a bunch more strength. Uh, we only have 1,443 strength at the moment. You easily could push this build to, to 2,000, get a ton more life, ton more damage. Um, I just, like I said, I decided I didn't want to push it too hard uh, because I wanted to get back to blasting maps, but I really wanted to try out the Strike Stacker. Uh, Flasks, uh, the only one I'll talk about is this one, Dying Sun. This gives you AoE, which helps with overlaps, and it gives you two more projectiles. So uh, we fire 10 projectiles, which is just an absolute ton. As you can see in the in the showcase, lots of projectiles flying everywhere on those bosses and they all overlap. So pros and cons of the build, I'll say uh, cons are it's a slow mapper. If you want, you can use Consecrated Path to map with. It's a little bit faster. I don't enjoy the totem mapping playstyle, but I know a lot of people don't mind it. If you don't mind it, I would switch to Consecrated Path for mapping and uh, you don't even have to change anything in the build. Just one gem and they they move around for you and you don't have to cast them quite as often. But yeah, so not a great mapper. Uh, and honestly, that's about it. As far as totem builds goes, this is pretty tanky. We got 6,500 in life, decent defenses, but also you're a totem uh, character. So you get to manually dodge everything. So when you have you know decent defenses and you're a totem build, you basically feel immortal. We did pretty much all the non-Uber content. Um, I did not do Ubers with this because I don't have spell suppression or spell block. It does not feel good to do the Ubers. So you would have to make some modifications to the build, which you absolutely could do if you so wanted. Um, like this chest makes you not be able to really block spell damage that effectively. So if you wanted to do that, you'd probably roll with a different chest. Um, you could go for spell suppression if you wanted to go kill Ubers with it personally hate the ubers so i didn't want to but yeah so not an uber killer as is and not a good mapper the positives of this build are it's incredible in the sanctum you drop your fisher totems and you just walk away everything dies um i as you saw in the in the showcase i killed bosses incredibly quickly with this build uh it felt really smooth as you know totems are really really strong against bosses this is no exception but that's gonna be it for me thank you for watching i have another video that's gonna be coming out soon i am playing a very very fast mapper you are not gonna to want to miss this one it is an absolute blast so if you're looking for a mapper check out my next video make sure you subscribe come check me out on twitch twitch.tv slash aer0 underscore underscore link in the description pob in the description 
Thank you for hanging out. And as always, take care.